Hello everyone and welcome back to First to Die at the End, sorry. Um Chapter four Valentino Valentino eleven oh nine PM Google Maps pretty much laughed when I asked for the fastest route to Times Square. New York is known for its convenient transportation, but it's pure chaos on Deathcast Eve, especially in Manhattan. I could have taken the six and transferred to some shuttle, but that trip was estimating one hour. I couldn't find any buses going downtown, so I figured my best bet was getting in another taxi. I started walking in the general direction, hailing down cars like I've seen so many New York City characters do in movies, but I must have been doing it wrong because no one stopped. Then, halfway there, much like going up the stairs of my newly realized walk-up, I accepted the only way to my destination was to embrace the journey. That's what I've been doing, and don't get me wrong, I'm excited to experience the subway, but I would have been denied all of this sightseeing if I were underground. I walked down Fifth Avenue, passing the entrance to the Central Park Zoo, seeing the famous Plaza Hotel the Rock and Rockefeller Center, where I'll absolutely be visiting in December to see that massive Christmas tree. It's been really exciting to glimpse so many iconic buildings in real life, but also lonely. I'm looking forward to experiencing all of this with Scarlet and all the new friends we'll be making along the way. I'm sure I'll see things differently. Perspective is everything. When I'm modeling, I am who I am, but how I appear depends on who's behind the camera. Some photographers will find my strong and flattering angles, Others won't. Which shots I personally prefer ultimately depends on my perspective, but perspectives shift over time, to years, months, weeks, days, hours, even minutes. Earlier today, though I guess technically tonight, as I jumped time zones, I was sure that nothing could be more beautiful than being on that plane and watching New York come into focus. I was wrong. Nothing is more beautiful than my first glimpse of Times Square. In the sky, everything below looks like a world for insects. On the streets, I'm the insect. The buildings are towering, and I find myself leaning my head back like when I'm modeling because I love the pop of my Adam's apple and the stretch of my long neck. But this angle isn't to make me look good right now. It's to appreciate the beauty around me. I stopped taking pictures blocks ago because these cell phone cameras aren't doing the city justice. Scarlet will arrive in the morning, and we can use her real camera to document our new lives. For now, I'm remaining present. That first step into Times Square is overwhelming, admittedly, because there's so much of life happening around every corner. Someone tries selling me bootleg DVDs of movies that are still in theaters. Shops and restaurants are so closely packed together that I wouldn't even know where to start. I record a quick video of the Deathcast hourglasses on the mega screen for Scarlet, though we'll probably find better quality footage on YouTube later. I get distracted by these two men shoving each other, one arguing to settle their debts and cash before the world be begins ending tomorrow. He's one of those people. I can't believe I escaped all those cons conspiracy theorists back home to immediately find one in Times Square, but that's the beauty of this city, right? New York is the nexus for everyone in the world, including Arizonan mo Arizonian models wanting to take their life to the next level, dreaming of their faces on these billboards for all to see. I walk deeper into the square. Is that what New Yorkers call it? I need to learn fast and pass someone in an Iron Man costume as he walks to someone mostly dressed up as Elmo. The massive head on the ground as if decapitated as the woman smokes a cigarette. I love this city with my whole heart already. I can't help but sneak a picture of that for Scarlet too, in case that's a one-time sighting. I keep going and stumble onto some teen on a stage. At first, I'm expecting him to sing a song into his mic, but instead, he's speaking with his haunting sadness about the brain aneurysms in his family and the dread of dying from one himself. It's heavier than I expected on a party that's been billed as the celebration of life, but then I find the sign that reads, tell your death cast story, and everything makes sense. 
That stage is for people talking about how this service will change their lives. Can't hurt to listen in on why people are willing to believe Deathcast. There aren't any more seats on those red glass bleachers, but I don't mind finding a place to stand. There's a spot next to this beautiful black girl with incredible style and this cute white boy whose curls are creeping out from under his baseball cap. The boy looks like he's having a hard time keeping it together, wiping the tears from his cheek. He must have a huge heart. All right, thank you so much for listening to that incredibly short chapter. Chapter four, Valentino. All right, thank you so much for listening. And if you're enjoying it so far, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.